So hello everybody. Thanks, thanks, Leon. As as Leon said, my name's Matt Frenchman, and I'm the CEO and, and co-founder of Sugar. Uh, we're a financing platform for video game studios. Um, thanks again to Yuki. We love working with you guys, um, and we're proud to sponsor this event. Um, and uh, yeah, we miss we miss the physical events. I certainly used to enjoy going to all the the locations and eating pizza and drinking beer and meeting people. And hopefully, we'll get back to that soon. Um, I'm going to share my screen just so I can get into the presentation that I've put together. So just bear with me while I do that. Um, you can see my Spotify play playlists. Um, so what I'm talking to you about, what I wanted to talk about in this talk is, um, actually maybe that hasn't worked, hang on. Uh, I'll just stick with this actually. Um, is actually starting a business um, and learning from all the mistakes and experiences that I've been through, what would I do um, if I had my time again? And if I were to put myself in the shoes of a game studio, what would be the most useful thing um, if starting from scratch? Um, and, and, and actually, what would be the best advice I could give you? Um, so just going through the slides, bear with me. Um, so the reason I, I feel like I can, I can talk to you about these things and being very candid is I've made a ton of mistakes over the years. Um, brief background is I spent 16 years in banking, then I left and, and launched Sugar in 2019. Uh, I've spent overall four years in games. I've got one failed startup behind me. I've got five failed startup investments. Uh, and I've advised founders and mentored on accelerator programs and helped startups to fundraise and work within a games publisher. So. I feel like I've had a good array of experience, which means I've learned a lot um, the hard way, but I've certainly learned a lot. And I just wanted to share some of the learnings with you guys. Just before I do that, just a quick overview of Sugar. We're a debt financing platform for the games world. So we are providing fully automated data-driven funding to game studios to help manage cash flow and to scale up and to finance marketing. Um, the way we do that are through our three main products. First is Sugar Boost, which is effectively a marketing loan. So when you have a live game and you're looking to spend money on Facebook and Google and uh, drive people to your game to generate revenues, we provide you with the finance for that. The second thing we have is Sugar Flow, um, which is giving you advanced access to your revenues. So when you generate revenues at Apple and Google and PlayStation and Steam, um, they don't pay you immediately. So we provide you with the money immediately so you don't have to wait. And then the third thing we do is VGTR finance. So this is a great scheme set up by the government and the HMRC. You get a rebate effectively on, on what you spend making your game, um, but it takes a while to process. So we bridge that gap and we give it to you immediately. Um, so into the core of the presentation, if I had my time again and I could go back to the future, what would I do differently and what would be the learnings from that? And therefore, what would I convey to you guys as things to focus on as you think about building your business? Obviously, building and growing a successful studio, uh, a game studio, is obviously you need a, a great game idea, an awesome team, and a shared vision. Um, but the other things that are super critical and maybe don't get as much bandwidth as they should do is how do you think about funding the journey? What's your people strategy? Do you have a roadmap of targets? Um, and can you think ahead 12 to 24 months? Because that's really what you need to be doing when you're planning. Uh, and that is a critical step. I think right at the beginning, I probably didn't think far ahead enough. Um, so this whole point about learning to juggle, um, it goes without saying that you need to have a game idea and start to think about a development team and start to think about creative input into the game. But the other things that you will need will be a business plan, uh, targets and milestones, a hiring plan, a financial model, a funding plan, You'll need to have great accountants and lawyers around you. You'll have to think about things like an option pool. So how do you incentivize people who are joining your business um, who maybe weren't founders along with you, but who are going to be imperative to building the studio? How do you incentivize them? So this whole concept of learning to juggle is because you're going to have to do all these things at once uh, and yet still keep your business moving forward. So this, 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 this leads to a, uh, a business plan. So this is the document that really is going to be your, 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 the way you're going to start your business. It's a plan. It's your vision. It's how you set aside your targets and your milestones. You know, what's the game you're building? What's the genre you're building? What's the sort of studio you want to make? How are you going to get there? 
What are your hiring plans going to be? What software might you use? What's your marketing budget going to be? Who are you going to hire, et cetera, et cetera. And then there's a big piece around financial forecasts and funding, which I'll touch on a little bit later. Um, there's a couple of links in the bottom of this presentation, which are well worth reading. Um, they come from a games point of view, actually, and were written a while back, but they're excellent from, from Gama Sutra and gamesindustry.biz. But your output really from a business plan should be a Google Doc. Um, your first draft's probably gonna take you a week and then you're probably gonna re rewrite it and go over it 10 times before you have the final business plan. And it's gonna be something that you might wanna share with a bank or with a funder or with an investor or with, a fund or with an advisor. So it's a serious document, but I would always ask advisors for help and feedback because you're gonna be spending so much time in the weeds as I often did that I couldn't see the wood through the trees and you want a fresh perspective. And also keep updating it. I would advise quarterly because whatever you put in your first business plan is never gonna play out that way. Something's gonna go wrong. You have to have a plan B. You actually probably have to have a plan C, D and E as well. So always be flexible. Um, one of the best things that I learned um, along the way was to make sure to have milestones and targets. So you know, if you're building a game, you know that you need to have certain developers hired in six months and you need to have a QA person or you need to start testing UA in 12 months and you need to do your soft launch in 15 months and you need to uh, start scaling the game in a year and a half. Those sorts of targets are what you really need to map out. And those are the things that you need to uh, share internally uh, with your people and also with advisors and try and stick to those targets. Things will not go to plan, but at least you have somewhere to start from. And those milestones aren't just testing the game and launching the game, but it's hiring, it's partnerships, it's fundraising. So think about those things and, and try and set them. Again, I think, I think revisiting them quarterly is a good idea, just like with the business plan. Then it comes to building a financial model, um, which is a massive part of building a business, building a business plan. Here I've put together a super simplified sort of eight month financial model uh, uh, of a mobile game and what it might look like. So if you start in January, you are employing a few people, you're spending a bit of money on legals and software, um, and actually you're burning cash, which means you're investing in the business. So that's a good thing. Uh, and I would always advise doing that. But you need to be able to fund this investment in the business. So as you map out when you're going to launch the game, what the extra costs might be, the further to the right you go, the lower the losses will go, and you hope that you will break even and make profit. Now, it will never go to this plan, but at least you have something mapped out so you know how much you need to fundraise. And this is, this is something that, I mean, our, our, our internal one, we revisit it. I, I look at it every day, actually, as I'm juggling costs, but officially we revisit the model every month. Uh, and this sort of forms a key part of the business as well. Um, once you've sort of figured out your, your financial model and your funding needs, um, and you know how much cash you're going to need, you have to think about how you're going to fund it. You know, where is that money tree? Um, you can either bootstrap it, which means funding it yourself. And, and lots of people try and do that. So they, you know, they work two jobs at a time um, uh, and they try and fund the studio themselves until they get to a critical milestone and they can fundraise. Other people look for grants. Uh, VGTR can be a good way to do it um, if you're at a certain stage and you've built part of the game. Or you can give away equity in the business, uh, either asking angels or VCs or friends and family to invest. Or you can look to take loans from banks or specialists like ourselves. Uh, or you can think about crowdfunding or Kickstarter campaigns. All of these things are viable options, but it's only once you've done the business plan and the financial model and set your targets that you know which of these is right for you. So just quickly going into the differences between equity uh, and debt, actually, because I think they're very relevant. Equity is, is effectively investment into your studio in exchange for shares. So an equity investor is looking for a very big return on their money. They want to be excited that you're going to build a studio and a game or a, or, 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 or a portfolio of games that at some point is going to be worth a lot of money to them. And typically you give away 20% of the company. I won't go through the buzzwords at the bottom, uh, but these are the sorts of phrases that you'll need to think about as you're going down that route. And then debt is money that's borrowed that has to be paid back. Lenders could be banks or individuals or funds, or, or again, specialists like ourselves. You have to think about the interest rate you pay, how long the, the loan is for and what the terms are. The advantage of this is that you don't give any inequity away um, and it's quicker to implement uh, and you don't have to think about a board. Uh, which will require a lot of governance on your on your part. So it's perfect for funding short-term projects, which is why, why we exist. Um, just coming to the closing part of the presentation now, um, there's five things that I found in my dialogue with studios that they weren't completely on top of, or they didn't give enough bandwidth to. 
Um, and the first is VGTR. So video games tax relief for every hundred pounds you spend making a game, as long as it, is, as it is eligible and you get your BFI certificate and your accountant does the work, you get a rebate of about 20% of that. Um, it's worth understanding, bizarrely, only about 20% of studios in the UK claim, uh, even though they make games. So it's something to think about. The second thing is digital store payment terms. And what that means is Apple, Google, PlayStation, oh, excuse me, that was my phone. Apple, Google, PlayStation and Steam don't pay you immediately. They'll probably take one or two or th even three months to pay you. So build that into your models and think about that for your cash flow. The third thing is pensions. You know, when you hire people, you have to provide pensions for them. It's a new government initiative that kicked in a few years ago. That's an extra cost. Build that into your models. And then the final two points are sort of linked, legal fees and an accountant. It's super important to have uh, the right partners for you. So especially as a game studio, you're going to be investing in legal documents for publishers and IP and all those sorts of things. So you have to have the right people in place. Um, and then just on this final slide, you know, what are the things that I could do if I could go back in time four years and do them again? These are my like main, main lessons that I would advise you guys on. So the first thing is speak to smart people and ask for help. So get advisors into the business who you trust, who can be your sounding board, who you can talk about strategy with. Then you need to plan and plan and plan and plan and plan. And that comes part and parcel with the business plan, the targets, the milestones. So over plan everything because it's much better to be detailed about these things. Third thing is know what you're bad at. So, you know, in a game studio, as you're, as you're starting out, you'll be doing the finance, the strategy, the development, the creative, everything. But at some point you can't do everything because you'll be juggling too many balls and you need to find who are the best people who you can bring into the business to work with you. Fourth thing is don't work seven days a week and avoid burnout. Um, you listen to tons of startup or new business podcasts or read articles and it all says work 20 hours a day, seven days a week. For me, that doesn't work. And I don't think there's any shame in admitting that. Um, you need to have downtime to recharge your batteries. Um, fifth, just keep updating and challenging your plans and models and funding. Like I said, I think, I think monthly for the financial model and quarterly for your targets and milestones is, is, is very good. Um, mistakes are fine, but make sure you act fast to rectify them. Be very strict on your to-do list because lots of people will want parts of your time um, and you'll get pulled away from what is really core to the business. Um, and then finally, plan A never works. So always have a plan B and a plan C. Um, so really this slide just wraps up all those things. You know, Make sure you have a business plan, a financial model, a fundraising plan, have the right balance between debt and equity and don't scrimp on your partners. Um, that's really it. Um, I don't know if we're doing questions, but otherwise here are our details. Follow us on Twitter or drop me an email. I love looking at business plans, models, having dialogue around games and studio growth. So I'm very happy to be involved and help. Um, there's a few game studios that I'm working with very closely at the moment and trying to help them. So I'd equally be, be very keen to do that for other people. So I'll wrap up there and hand back over to Leon. Amazing. Thank you very much, Matt. Um, we have a couple of questions, just um, we've always really quick ones, I think. So um, this, the question about the slides, I will make sure that I share the slides with everyone afterwards if all of the speakers are okay with that. Um, and then there was another question, Matt, which was, how do you know if your game is video games tax relief fundable? That's a very good question. Um, I would always defer and say, speak to a VGTR specialist. But, you know, some of the key things are that you need to be spending on your development spend within the European uh, Union, even though we're even though we've left, it's still applicable. Um, and you need to be spending the money out of the company, out of the studio. Those are the two things that I find that people uh, fall down on. And also, you need to get a BFI certificate. That's that's super critical. So there's a test to be passed there, uh, and they're very good at communicating that. It's just a process to go through. Awesome. Well, um, oh, actually, wait, another question just popped up here. Um, when it comes to raising funds, is it common to combine funding methods such as angel investment loans and then follow up later with crowdfunding? If so, which would you recommend a startup start with and which should um, we avoid going for first? Um, it's not common to combine them, um, but it's very doable to combine them. The only reason you should, I would advise you not to combine them is because they all take time. So a loan can be relatively quick, but angel investment can take you probably two, three, four months to close, depending on your network. Um, I would argue that angel investors is probably the best way to go. Because if you're starting a new business, 
you can use your own network to find those people. And if they know you, then they probably trust you. Whereas crowdfunding is a long process to go through. It can be very effective, but it's probably not ideal for a brand new business.